Hey, I'm real estate broker Greg Mann and welcome back to the G-Man Show. Today we're going to talk college, so I've got two great guests. My daughter Ainsley, welcome to the show Ainsley. Hi, thank you for having me. And Sonia, welcome back to the show. Thank you. I know how difficult it is for anyone moving from high school to college. It's not an easy process. You struggled with some things. You've gotten through the first year at college. Today, I just wanted to talk about what can a high school student expect? And I know, Sonia, you've got a daughter just starting to go through this, so it would be great to have a little quick round table. But Ainsley, how was it? What was the first thing you did? Well, the whole process to finding a college that's right for you starts in like your junior year of high school. So junior year is when you really want to start like locking in on making sure that your GPA is good and you're getting like your community service hours in, you're doing extracurricular sports and clubs and things like that. Because at the end of the day, what colleges are looking for is that you're like challenging yourself, not just as a student, but like outside of that. So when senior year comes around, you have to apply to schools, you have to make your resume, you have to write your college essay, which has to be on like an interesting topic that's relevant to your life. And you just wanna have things that, that's gonna make you stand out differently from all the other students that are applying. Because there's a lot of students applying at each school, and it's not an easy process. So, you know, people don't want to get into the habit of thinking, oh, I've got it made, I'm going to this school. Yeah. Yeah, no, I personally had always wanted to go to University of Florida, and I was, like, pretty confident that I was going to get into it, but I didn't end up getting into it. But it worked out because I love my school now, Florida State University. Well, that's an interesting school. Your, your daughter's just getting ready to leave high school. Yes. How's she feeling about the whole process? Had I known what Ainsley just said that it starts in junior high, you know, junior, junior year of your high school, I think it would have been really great to get really ready for it. So in our family, we made some moves in junior year. So now my daughter has been rushing to in her senior year to make sure she gets caught up and do, you know, take the the SAT tests, you know, mm -hmm. a couple of times to make sure it's exactly what the way her rate score should be. So it's exciting, super exciting. She's graduating in May and she's deciding between possibly your school, FSU, or possibly a school in California. So we're deciding between a couple of different so schools. That's exciting news. Super exciting. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of kids don't understand too, you go and do visits to your campuses. You might go to more than one school. There's a lot to take on board. Um, what did you take away from your school visits? What, when you went to the school, what was you really looking for in, in terms of campus? Well, going back to what I was talking about with the University of Florida and Florida State, I toured both of them like the day before, like one after another. And when I was at UF, I was like, hmm, like you're, and then when I went to Florida State, I was like instantly like, this just feels right. Like you're just gonna walk through campus and you're just gonna like kind of Personally, you just feel like that's where you're meant to be. But also, um, I love Florida State because the campus is very, um, it's not like your typical Florida environment, you know? It's kind of like more like Northern. You have like the big brick and like it's cool. There's hills and like all that stuff. So I just really like that too. So it's got a really nice feeling. I, I was just recently there. I love the fact that you've got the huge trees. You've got some uh, hills, as you say. There's some great things to do there. The campus is kind of beautiful and unique. Um, dorm life. Lots of kids go into dorm life and I think it's a bit of a shock to the system. Um, <clears throat> what was it like for you? Living in a dorm, a lot of colleges require that freshmen live in their dorm their first year. Um, Florida State did not, but I still chose to live in the dorm because, you know, I wanted to make the transition a little bit easier. And living in a dorm is good because it gives you easy access to like all your classrooms, like extra resources and stuff like that. But it is a little like hard to adjust, especially like me, like I've never had siblings or anything. So like living with another person I like that of my age was just very strange to me. It was a challenge. It was a challenge. Um, I also didn't choose my roommate. We were randomly um, paired together. So it was like also a little awkward in that sense at first, but then you kind of like figure things out as you go along and we ended up really liking each other, but we, we strictly like coexisted, I guess. But she was a, she was a good she was a good roommate. So I think a lot of it depends. I mean, obviously everyone's just pushed together. You don't really get to choose, um, and then you develop that relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing you said to me 
several weeks ago is that you know you, you, you feel it's important to make friends very quickly when you get to the school yeah. uh, you know is it easy to do that I mean there's a ton of stuff to do surely there's a ton of opportunities you know there's different clubs there's Greek life there's club sports um, I think the thing for me that I struggled with, with at first was I don't think I realized that this was what my life is going to look like for the next four years you know like being up in Tallahassee like living there going to school there like it, I didn't realize that that's where I was going to be until like three months into the school year and it finally clicked to me. I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to be this here. Like it. I need to start like branching out a little bit more and like making new relationships and things like that. But yeah. <laughs> I think it's really great, you know, being with a roommate that you're not, you know, you didn't choose. That's with work as well. You're going to get, you know, be, be working with people that you don't choose to. So mm -hmm. it's a great yeah. experience. They put, I think it's a great idea to put you with somebody that you weren't. And the fact that within three months, you kind of picked up on it that quickly yeah. and adjusted to your environment. That's amazing. Yeah, I think it is. And I think it actually adds a lot to the fact that, you know, if, if someone's not from, you know, your town or your state or your country, you can learn so much from each other, you know, one thing I thought you would really struggle with, and I'm sure lots of kids do, and, and I'm sure you know your, your daughter will do the same, just actually getting food <laughs> and surviving on that yeah, kind of thing. That was definitely a struggle. Um, I had a meal plan, but the food isn't like, the, like it's not the best food you're ever going to eat, you know, and it's like, uh, I don't know. But I also have, I'm in a sorority, so my sorority has um, meals, they have lunch and dinner. And so I go there sometimes when it's like something that I'm interested in eating. But yeah, it was a struggle to find like a balance with eating and like the new lifestyle and like working out and like just everything. But what's your, your take on sorority? You know, worth joining? Um, I, so you're going to get out of it what you put in. So if you aren't that involved in your sorority, um, you're not going to feel like you're getting anything out of it. Like you're going to feel like it's kind of pointless to be in. But the more involved you are, the more opportunities you have to like meet new people and like um, build those relationships even stronger. So I personally am really happy that I joined a sorority. It gives me a lot of opportunities to meet new people, gain new experiences, and it will give me opportunities in the future when it comes to like, um, like networking with like business people and stuff like that because I'll have like known the older girls who might go into the field that I go into. And that's a lifetime, that's a lifetime friendship too. And, and quite often you see these people meeting each other around the world 20 years later and there's, there's a tight, tight bond, isn't there? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think the first year is, is, I think you just find your feet the first year. You, yeah. You're not really, you know, chosen your major. Yeah, I, I personally went in undecided, um, and I struggled for a long time, like deciding what I wanted to do. I've settled for now on entrepreneurship, commercial entrepreneurship, but it's also very common for people to change their majors like constantly throughout their, those first two years because it's it's really difficult to decide what you want to do, you know. Well, and so I also think there's a bad kind of reputation, I guess, around it because people think. Oh, I'm going to major in this, but then they're glued to that like for the rest of their life. Like they have to stay within that um, little area of their major, you know. Like if I'm a business major, I can't go do like I don't know, like artwork or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I, I think I think you'll agree that if you find something you love to do, it's not a job. It's a love. It's 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 your daily activity. Like you love your mortgage work. I love the real estate. And, and to be honest, when I was going through the school process, I didn't think I would become a you know a real estate broker. That wasn't the goal. I like talking to people, I like meeting people, but I, I actually have a like a, a mechanical mind, so I like a lot of engineering things. Um, but that was just too boring. What about yourself? Well, I think it's it's unrealistic to expect somebody that's 18 years old to decide yeah. what you want to do for the rest of your life. So I love the idea that you chose a major where it's kind of it could be broad. There's so many different segments to business. But if somebody goes and know their medical field, medical is what they love to do. I think listen to yourself and, and, and kind of be absorb, you know, absorb mm -hmm. what's the environment around you, see what you're interested in. 
But you can definitely, I know so many people that you know graduated in one major and then completely chose something different. Yeah. I didn't think I would be a mortgage broker. When I was going to school, I was a psychology major. So oh. it helps, but yeah, it definitely it's, it's changes over so I think that's a lesson for every person that's sitting in your shoes right now to say, gosh, this is the beginning of my career, my life, whatever it may be. Um, I don't want to box myself in. You're going to be good moving into your second year. You're moving out of the dorm. Yeah. Um, how do you think that will change things? You're moving into a really cool, actually nice apartment complex. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm most excited to have like a kitchen and like a couch to just like sit on. Because in the dorm, you just have your bed. So if you just want to like relax, you have to lay in bed. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I'm also excited for the apartment because I feel like it's going to give me a little bit more of a taste of like adulthood. adulthood. Yes. You know, living in the dorm, it's like you're on your own, but you're still like, it just doesn't, it like feels like a summer camp living in a dorm. Yeah, you know? makes you in one little room yeah. something. Yeah. But I think living in an apartment will be very cool and very challenging. Well, I'll tell you what I'm too. looking forward to. I'm looking forward to coming up and, and having a, a whole, you know, um, beautiful meal cooked by you in the apartment <laughs> laid out so beautifully. I can't wait for that. Um, I wish you all the best for, for obviously a whole school, school career. Um, I can't wait to see what you develop into. I'm so I'm sure you're super excited about FSU and going back there yeah. very soon. I know you're taking your car this year. Well, next time you go back, that's kind of a common thing. It's a little little nerve wracking for a parent. Um, what's your thoughts on that? It's a four and a half hour drive, so I think it will make life easier. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't have my car my freshman year, and it was a little frustrating at times, like when I needed like go get groceries or like. I just didn't want to be on campus anymore. You know, I maybe wanted to go to the beach or go drive up to Georgia and go to like a little can and go hiking. You know what I mean? So I'm really excited to have my car because I think I'll be able to just kind of do some more things and explore around Tallahassee a little bit more. And also, the four and a half hour drive isn't that bad. It's actually, it's actually kind of enjoyable to have a nice long car ride. Just listen to music. So, so it's a good, it's a good point. If if you're going to school for the first year and you can take a car, it's a good possible take it and yeah. use it and explore the area. Yeah, that's good, but I also it's like I, at the end of the day, I was fine without having my car. Like okay. I made it, but it would have been nicer to have it, most likely. Well, Ainsley, I appreciate you coming on the show and share, sharing some of the insight into your first year at college and and how you got there. Sonia, oh, I, I I thank you for being on and talking about this too. I know you're going through that process, and I, and I wish you and your daughter all, all the all the luck you can have. You. I'm Greg Mann, real estate broker. Thanks for watching the G-Man Show. We'll be right back. Managing your investment property is as easy as one, two, three. One, sign up at GoRent123.com. Two, let Greater Orlando Realty handle everything for you when it comes to managing your property, from qualifying tenants to collecting rent, processing maintenance requests, and everything in between. Three, sit back, relax, and count all that money you're making. Earning passive income on your property is as easy as one, two, three with Greater Orlando Realty. Visit GoRent123.com today. Hey, welcome back to the G-Man Show. Here with Laura Collins from First International Title. Laura, tell me what you do, tell me how you do it, and tell me how people get hold of you. Thank you. I am Laura Collins with First International Title. My phone number is 314-265-9000. And I always appreciate um, a text to get to know me. I um, am one of the sales reps for the downtown office of, or, of First International Title. We do have 37 offices, and I represent our downtown office and Waterford Lakes office. Um, one of the things about me with my clients, my clients are realtors and loan officers mostly, and anybody that's selling their house, they get to choose their title company. And so that's why a lot of people depend on their realtors to choose their title company, and that's why I am, that's, they're my clients. I have worked at Disney for 20 years, and anybody that works with me is going to have that, that kind of customer service that Dis Disney has instilled in me. I love to help. I love to be available and I want to make sure that um, they are growing their business and it is about them. So you'll do open houses, you'll go to offices, you'll help agents build their business, all with a cheerful smile. How do people get hold of you? Um, you can again get a hold of me 314-265-9000. I'm real estate broker Greg Mann and welcome back to the Mortgage Minute with Sonia Hishimi of Edge Home Finance. Sonia? Yeah. You do loans, you shop loans for buyers, you 
get them from the start of the process to the end of the process. You also have a team of people that help you. I want to talk about how does someone that works at Wells Fargo or at any other banks get out of that environment into your environment so they can make more money and help more people? Well, that was exactly actually, it's interesting you say Wells Fargo because, and, or any bank for that matter, it's great sometimes to get started in that environment, just to kind of get comfortable with the process and know how a loan process works. So I started with Wells Fargo and then through, you know, after being there for a few years, I decided to become a broker. And the main reason for that was, is I wanted to say yes to people. As a, as a lender at a bank or, or any environment in that situation, it's not something you can control. You only offer what the bank offers or a credit union or a direct lender even for that matter. You offer only what they have. As a mortgage broker, it, it opened up doors for me that I never knew even existed at that point. And so I can do construction to perm. I can do a DSCR loan for an invest, investor not to show their income. If they that rent becomes the income, I can literally offer somebody a loan that does not doesn't have to give me tax returns if they choose not to. As business owners, we all know we take deductions. So that takes the takes them out of the market for to be able to, you know, to buy a home. So with a DSCR loan, they have the option to use the rent as income for that specific property. There are so many more options now that I can I can choose my hours. I can hire as many people as I want as assistants or as processors. As in you know, those options just are simply not there when you're not a broker. And that's and that is the best decision I could have possibly made for myself. Hey, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, I, I like the, I, I like the fact that you you can open up and, and and bring people into your business and develop your business, but develop them as well with great training. And they can make money. They can satisfy their buyers' needs, which is fantastic. How does somebody thinking about switching from one company to another contact you to talk to you about what you can offer? Yes, I, I train everybody personally and I, and I will sit down with them, go through the process. Uh, they can call me simply by you know 407-403-8658. They can go to my website, which is loanswithsonia.com on social media as well. Hey, that's fantastic. Thanks for being on the show. That's a great mortgage minute. I'm Greg, Greg Mann, broker owner of Greater Orlando Realty. We specialize doing property management. If you want to contact me, 407-774-9858, or go to my website, GoRent123.com. That's GoRent123.com. This has been the G-Man Show. Thanks for watching.